We're building a mega pond. Shall we slam? What up, Slayers? We're back at it with another Slay Venture, and today is the day, guys. It is the day. We go ahead and get the Mega Pond. Now, as you can see, we started ahead of you guys. Keep up. If you're not subscribed to the channel, subscribe, because we're going to have a massive 12-foot pond inside of this garage. But it's not going to be a square. Even though this looks like a square, it's not. It's the round pond right here. I don't know if Blaze Exotic Amaranth posted it yet. But if he did, proud of you bro, you guys should go ahead and check out his channel as well because I helped him set up this exact pond and made his filtration system. So today I'm going to walk you through that as well, but be as hyped because this is going to be the biggest pond we have until we get a new house. Now, if you walk with me here, we have little Lego pieces and it's a great place to go ahead and do exercises all the time. So it's perfect. We have everything we need in this area. Now guys, you're like, why are you putting on these mats? Well, even though I do have a heater for my pond, when it gets cold, which is not often in Florida, but when it does, these tropical fish could die. And in order to prevent that, we go ahead and lay these mats down. So when it gets a little chilly, the garage floor gets cold, therefore the bottom of the pond is gonna get cold, therefore the entire pond will get cold and fish die. We don't want that to happen. So I'm laying on these mats. It's about, let's see how thick they are. I have some right here. They're not that thick because I don't want it to go ahead and displace the pond, but thick enough for installation. All right guys, so as you can see, we have a beautiful 12 foot pond. Doesn't come with the women or the men, <laughs> but neither the children. But it does come with a beautiful 12 foot pond that is 30 inches high. Roughly gonna be 1800 gallons when you incorporate the same filtration system. Let's walk over here and check out the pond. So we're gonna go ahead and scoop this thing up right here. It's a little caca leaf, be free my friend. And we have our beautiful fish. Now guys, you know that my ponds are usually very, very clear. But I did a water change to go ahead and acclimate the fish with the new water that's gonna be coming in this pond. This is nice, healthy, natural well water. It doesn't have the components that tap water does. Moving forward, all our fish are doing good. Look at Kitty. Hey, Kitty, how you doing? Look at that. Oh, what a good, good, good pussy cat there. So we have everything ready to go and we have our filtration system here. Now it's gonna be a very easy fix. I'm gonna grab the same water that's in here and bring more water in that pond so it's not gonna be that much of a shock for the fish as well as we're gonna use the same two trash cans I built. I'm gonna walk you through it because a lot of you guys have been wondering what's in the trash cans, what you need, etc. So, there you go, your DIY filter and pool for a massive garage pool pond. All right, so we're just filling in the remainder of our mats. You see the mountain from your pop sticks. And it's gonna be amazing. What I love about these mats is you don't have to measure anything out besides the square foot you need based on your pond. And it's easy. It's plug and play. There's cheaper ways, but I like this because I just wanted to make it look nice and clean without having to spend big money on mats and stuff. So, all right. Once we fill this in, then we actually build a big old pond. All right, guys, we're opening up our brand new pool pond. We have our important safety rules. We're not gonna need those because we're not using that uh, for swimming. It's gonna be for monster fish. All right, there are the legs. Here comes what we need the most, the liner. All right, sweet. So give us a few moments while we go ahead and let it lay everything out and show you the finished product. Should look like this without the kit. Cool. This actually. Sweet. Guys, it's coming together and it's looking amazing. It's fitting just perfectly. And we still have room for the pond right behind you. Shall we go ahead and keep that pond? Comment below if you think we should run two ponds in the future. All right, guys. Pond is all set up. We are about to add water now. I'm gonna go ahead and start brushing it out on the bottom, brush the liner out so that we don't have any wrinkles. But guys, it looks good. It looks absolutely amazing. Nice. Oh my gosh. 12 feet, 1800 gallons. It's gonna be a long time before it's filled. So while we're going ahead and collecting all of our water, moving it in here, we're gonna go ahead and set up those filtration systems on this side. It's gonna be great, we have all the lighting we need. It's prime, guys, check this out. 
great news. We're building a mega pond. So guys, what we're doing right now is pushing the ends of the pond to get maximum amount of surface area to eliminate these wrinkles right here. I think this is as level and straight as we're gonna get. Period. What do you think? Looks good. Looks good. Looks pretty sweet, guys. I'm excited. Now, 1,600 more gallons to go. After much water gathering, bucket by bucket, we're almost there, guys. We're almost there. And on top of that, I'm not even worried for the rest of the water because we're going to be using the remainder of the water that is in here with all of my beautiful catfish. Now they're very hungry. And the reason why they're being so aggressive with each other, so angry and so vicious is because I have been purging them in preparation of their transfer. Now Slayers, if you have monster fish and they're as big as this or even small ones adding them to bigger aquariums, I highly recommend you purge your fish prior to doing that. You don't want to go ahead and have them vomit up the food you just fed them the day before because then you're going to have to do a big water change and vomit inside the water as well as regurgitated food will go ahead and lead to ammonia spikes and then the end of your fish. Right now, we're still working on gathering more water, but I promise to go ahead and show you my filtration system and how I build it. All right, but before we go ahead and do that, I'm gonna go ahead and start presetting and pre-laying my cinder blocks. I had to add an extra cinder block because this pond's height is an extra six inches. Now, let me go ahead and give you guys a mental picture. We're gonna have the trash can here, which sucks in water, then it's gonna trickle into the other trash can and push water. Once it's all done, you guys will have a better visual of what I'm talking about. If you listen, it's quiet. You can't hear a single thing. We turn off the pump because it's finally time to go ahead and move our filtration system to the beautiful, nice 12 foot mega pond here at the slave pad. So, to begin, we need to go ahead and empty out all the water that is stored in both of these beautiful bins. Now, here I have my bio medium, my biological filtration that has a lot of lava rocks. You can have bio balls, etc. But lava rocks are very, very cheap, very effective, as well as super do it yourself. As well as I have some movable media. I'm going to show you guys every single thing I have step by step. It could be boring for those who don't like it, but very informative to those who love to know how to build their own filtrations at a low cost. Alrighty, so we're gonna go ahead and go with the return trash can first. Now I'm gonna pick up the pipes right now and I'm gonna open my lid up. Oh yeah, there we go. Here we go, here we go. Come on, open that in nice and tight. It's really sealed, it's good, perfect. Let's take a look. Now this filter floss here is brand new. I just added it literally 24 hours ago because I was prepared to go ahead and show you guys everything um, You guys know these big fish poop a lot. So as you can see there's some tint to it now Here's my movable media some of it's loose But I'm going to show you the little contraption that Blake's exotic animal wrench and I did we call it the bow Is it the Bowie or the Billy? I know wait I think it was the Bowie. We, we named it something because we didn't patent it yet, but it's getting patented So don't worry about that now let me go ahead and take this out. I don't want to have a lot of water dripping everywhere. Here's our filter floss. And I have some carbon. If you look over there, we're bringing in some water right now. That's gonna be for the pond. And we're adding that here. So I have filter floss. And look at the layers. I have three layers of filter floss. Well, three folds. And that's what's holding a lot of the poop. You see that? And I have carbon. Now guys, this is the contraption I'm talking about here. This is my little lottery box full of biomedia. Now we just gotta go ahead and move this as safe as possible. Let's wedge this thing out over here. Ooh. Ah. Oh boy. Heavy, 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 heavy. Water is so heavy. I think I can get it out. Come on. Come on, baby. Oh my good. Oh, it's holding on. Oh my gosh. All right, we're getting this out. Uh, Lily, can you can hold I the contribute? trash can? Yeah. Hold the trash can. Here's my little lottery box. This is my bio media. It's gonna be here. I'll show you guys that in a second. Let's go ahead and move this back all here. 
before it falls down. Oh, that's my foot. All right. You guys are good? I'm good. All right, guys. So this is what I'm talking about. This is my little lottery box that I put together with Blake's Exotic Animal Ranch. We were brainstorming over the phone on how to prevent this K1 media from falling through the bulkheads into the pipes back into the pond. So we call it our little lottery box. And what happens is this media moves around like this constantly. So all the bacteria that wants to die dies and then new bacteria is formed because there's constant aeration. You can go ahead and put an air stone in here to make it circulate better as well as predatory fin has the identical setup as well, just on a bigger scale. So if you guys want to go ahead and have some extra media, this is a great how-to tool. It's really easy. It's some egg crates, zip ties, and those little K1 media rings that I was showing you guys about. Sweet. So that is just what's going on in the return. The biological, which is the one that's the intake, is just lava rocks. But I'll show you guys what I'm going to do with that as well. Alrighty, we're adding the lottery box inside. Now we're good to go. As you can see, there's a lot of space in the side of that lottery box for that K1 Medion to move around and do well and pump that water right back into this beautiful pond. Now look at that. Looks perfect. Perfect height. All we did was add an extra six inches with two new cinder blocks. We're gonna add another two cinder blocks to the other one so that the water travels with gravity and then pushes out into the pond. We're looking good, guys. We're looking good. All right, guys. So I wanted to show you. Here's my lid. And this lid here looks like a soda can where I went ahead and cut out some divots to hold the hose in place so when that pump, which is really strong, pumping a lot of water, the hose doesn't come out. Now, if you look inside as well, I have a PVC pipe to make it look like a legit canister filter you buy at a store. And if you look below, I don't know if you guys can see, there's some filter floss right there. All right, here you go. Come on, get out of there. Guys, this is my biomedia. In large chum bags. Ooh, it's about a 25 pound bag, 30 pound bag. Maybe more, I don't even know. But yeah, that's what I have going on in my filter. Three big bags, I'm full of fish poop right now. And if you look in here, you can't really see. Oh, that's poop. Tons of fish poop that you always gotta replace. I do this a lot. So what I'm doing right now is tightening my bulkheads making sure that everything's nice and tight after removing all that media all out. All right, cool, nice and tight, good and sturdy, right and dirty, look at that. So guys, if you guys want to see my setup, here you go. I have some drainage systems here. They're guards pretty much to prevent anything else that's big to fall in, but small particles like poop fall in. I have three returns. So I have one on this side, one on this side, one on this side. The middle one, I recommend guys, if you have bigger sumps, to do a fatter pipe, like I did with Blake's Exotic Animal Ranch. I don't know when he's posting it, but brother, you know we did good with Big Charlotte right there. It's about a three inch pipe we put on his to go ahead and have maximum amount of water flowing out. So water will come in on three different levels because that pump raises the water all the way to the top of this trash can and I don't want it to overflow. That's why I have three returns. And these three returns go back into that trash can right over there, then back into the pond, making my fish happy and healthy. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Stay tuned for the next one because I'm gonna show you what I put inside of these beautiful bins and filters. And we're gonna be moving a beautiful fish into this beautiful pond. With that being said, love you guys. Thanks for the support. Over 400K, let's hit 500,000, and we'll see you on the next adventure. Booyah.